put your let's press the button everyone <laughs> got it so just to say for the recording um hello everyone uh welcome to this atp zoom information session whether you're here in this session or indeed if you're re-watching it um uh the recorded version um great to see some people here i was about to say you're welcome to put video on if bandwidths permit recognizing um that this is a time of day when um that was certainly where i live where bandwidths start to uh get eaten up particularly as a, as people awaken and get onto netflix so you may not have quite the stream that you need um i'm very aware that one or two is still trying to connect to audio um hope you can hear us now so yes i'm lynn lynn kendrick and i'm the course leader for ma and MFA advanced theatre practice and what I'm going to do now is just tell you a little bit about the course um, so to do so I'm going to share my screen and just share with you a powerpoint um, about with some a few words not too many and some images of uh, the kinds of work that comes out of this course to give you a sense of what it's all about. Um, so, as mentioned, this is MA, MFA Advanced Theatre Practice, and you'd be forgiven for thinking, what on earth is this course all about? Unlike other postgraduate courses at Central, which sometimes the titles are clearer, such as MA Voice Studies, um, MA in Sonography, it's clearer what the course is actually teaching and training you in. So it's worth explaining a bit about the, the title Advanced Theatre Practice or ATP, as I will say from here on in, as is, it is fondly known. Um, it's called ATP. It's the longest standing postgraduate course here at Central, started off as a diploma and uh, graduated up to being an MA and now you can take an MFA as well. And it's because it's been around for quite a few decades now, and because a number of our graduates go into the industry, into the theatre and performance industry, and now in quite high up positions, it has a legacy and it has a reputation. So we've kept advanced theatre practice because that in and of itself is a really useful thing to study because people have heard of it. And once you get a reputation, it's good to maintain those histories and maintain those networks as well. So advanced theatre practice, what is involved? Well, first of all, there's a nice image for you of an example of advanced theatre practice. And this is from a piece of work that was made not last summer, but the summer before during um, the early stages or initial stages of the pandemic. And here you can see, uh, um, uh, quite a beautiful landscape. This is um, up in the Scottish Highlands um, where these students eventually managed to go. And you can see here peeking out um, four of the students that were involved in this project. Um, and the company was called um, The Ants and they made a production called We Still Facts. So over on the left hand side of the screen here, you'll see there's a fax machine. And this was a, a performance that was really trying to be anti-digital uh, during a time when everything went digital. How can one resist the digitization of our lives and ourselves and our cultures um, when a pandemic forces us all into lockdown? Um, but it was also uh, an experiment for these guys in analog and alternative technologies. So they literally built, built several fax machines, seven of them initially. And the idea was this fax machine would be delivered to your door. And then, of course, you would be sent a message. And then the phone would ring. And then some instructions would arrive. And eventually, a kind of ludic based, game based, um, quite scenographic, quite sonic experience unfolds in your own home. And I like to start with talking about this work because this work has really uh, continued beyond the um, course itself. And that's the point about ATP is that students graduate as a company, they form companies through the course 
and they graduate with a body of work and indeed numerous tools for making further work beyond that point. So it's worth Googling the ants and We Still Facts and indeed their other production, which is called Crumpet, which is about the attempt to uh, throw a, crump a crumpet through, um, through a wall. It's far more interesting than making it sound. Um, both those uh, productions have continued to be booked and to tour and to gain some real interest uh, in, by the profession and um, in the field of theatre and performance as things start to open up in the UK, for sure. So what did these students here study? So here we, we've got at the bottom, uh, Deanna, and then Eva, and then Chow Lin, and then Paul. And then the other person involved in this was Lucy Curtis. She's actually the photographer of this image. So what is ATP all about? It's an experimental theatre making course which focuses on collaborative practices. And we explore the process and possibilities of theatre making through the following performance, collaboration, disciplinarity and interdisciplinarity, and research and inquiry. And we do this, just moving the dialogue box out of the way, we do this through the model of the company and with theatre makers and artists. So throughout any given academic year, we can invite anything between 20 to 30 different theatre makers and artists to come in to work with students on their current practice in some shape or form. I have a list of some examples of those in a moment. Um, I just want to give one little example of how the course actually does this, what the student experience is like. So here this sentence says that students can sub study one of the following three, either performer practices, sonography, or composition. And this is in the autumn term only. So when ATP students arrive, they get to make a choice between one of these three. It's not the only little module or unit that they study in that term, but I'm just using this as one example. So for three mornings a week, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., students would uh, be either in a group of performer practices, sonography or composition. And they're the three contemporary disciplines that sort of act as constellations around the theatre making and practice of the course. So of course, for performer practices, you can read acting, for sonography, you can read design, and for composition, you can read directing. But we don't train those roles directly. What we look at is the experimental and contemporary versions thereof. So performer practices is very different to acting. Obviously, there's plenty of courses you can do in acting, particularly at Central, some of the um, best across the world. But performer practices is very different. And just to give an example of how that's different, um, the performer practices rather than acting practices, the performer is um, the, both the, the actor and also the generator or the creator of the work. So all three of these areas, all three of these clusters rather, look at how they are position of making and a position of authoring and a position of identity and agency. So the performer might be uh, engaged in autobiographical performance. The sonographer is not just designing work that other people make. They are <laughs> generating sonography for their work, which they are the author of. And for composition, we're looking at all those kinds of uh, techniques and approaches that might be considered directorial, but without getting stuck into the stickiness and the difficulties of that role. We do that later on in the course. We have an option in directing text in contemporary theatre. So we do eventually return to the role of director, but not after we've sort of pulled it all apart and asked some important questions about what it means to make decisions in a space on behalf of others. I'm just checking that why this isn't scrolling down. There we go. Uh, Lastly, it's important to say that ATP is a full-time course. At the moment, students are in three full days and two half days a week, so effectively four full days, with some time put aside for independent research, obviously for going out and uh, 
uh, seeing performances in theatre as well. Um, but we do, as the course progresses and you get into more rehearsal time, more student-led time, there's also often the requirement to work in the evenings and sometimes on Saturdays as well. Quick example of people who teach on the course. We've had Katie Mitchell in, who has a good connection with the course. She's a, quite a renowned European director. Um, Ali Spool, who is artist of color, who's an actor and sound artist, but just got a job as a professor at Ohio State University. So I don't know for how much of her I'm gonna get again. Uh, Duncan McMillan, who's the writer of Lungs, People, Places and Things, and also an ATP grad, so he occasionally is available to come back and see us. Uh, Nikki Aqua, also an ATP grad and artist of colour and the writer for a new play called For a Black Girl, which was supported by Barbican Theatre recently. We've had Sleepwalk Collective, who just before the pandemic hit were due to do... Um, a production at uh, the Battersea Arts Centre or BAC in South London about swimming pools and then managed to graduate that uh, online, which is a very interesting um, process in and of itself. And HP students were about sort of joined in in that process of them working on that. Uh, Glenn Neath um, uh, is a writer of Theatre in the Dark, so writes for Headphone Theatre and uses a lot of binaural um, technology. He's actually coming in again next week. Lucy McCormick, who's a performance artist, and Tim Crouch, again an early ATP grad from when it was a diploma, who's now a well-known theatre maker and writer. Helgard Haug from Rimini Protocol, and Dean Rogers, who's a producer of The Crystal Maze, amongst other things. It's a good example of an ATP graduate who actually makes quite a decent living out of theatre making and performance. And that's something else we talk about on ATP is how sustainability is also about sustainability of the self, of the artist, of you and who you are, and how can you uh, kind of package and create and talk about your work in ways that helps you to get it funded, to get it booked, and to um, hopefully earn a living from it. Not easy in this day and age, but it is doable. So I've just got some images here then, just a couple more minutes now, some images, and then we can stop for any questions that you may have. Um, this is an interesting, uh, looks very boring, but it's not image uh, of how Ye um, uh, moving around uh, a lot of chairs in a studio, in one of our performance studios at Central. And um, this is an experiment in dealing with the real things in a space. So this group, were put together uh, by me for the spring term for the experimental laboratory unit when we curate the students into groups. And for their first rehearsal, they were a bit annoyed because it had been set up for a lecture and was full of chairs. So they came over to my office and said, we couldn't do anything then. So I said, well, what did you do? They said, well, we just spent the whole time shoving chairs around the space. So I said, that's the thing that you did. That's the real thing that took, happened in the space. So they caused the eye rolled a bit and said, okay, let me get it, we get it. But actually, in all seriousness, that was the reality of that moment. And it's a very good example of how on ATP, uh, we really pay attention to the real things that are happening in spaces, to the real people that are happening in spaces, and how those things become important in the maneuver into performance making. So this is a, an image of, of this group at the end of their experimental laboratory performance. So they embraced this idea of stuff in a room and built a huge citadel in the middle of Performance Studio One, as it was known then. And uh, but inside the citadel had lots of tiny cameras which produced a live feed. And then in, hidden inside the citadel, these various little scenes and vignettes. And But themselves as a performers were moving through the work all the time. So here we have a projected image of Claudia upside down, performing one event, but the foot of Maddie uh, going into the Citadel to pick up and perform another. So a constant movement between image and the real body and the real maneuvers in the space, coping with this material and then the projected imagined image on the outside. Um, 
the, this group really uh, produced some very effective work. So they carried on working together and in their final piece, um, at the, towards the end of their MA, they produced a piece of work called Bodies of Water, which was both an, a piece about water preservation and ecology, but also what was manifest in the studio by the very simple but difficult question, how do you transport water safely in a theatre space? So here is Nadine and Simona, and they're passing a body of water across themselves and through themselves and past themselves. Um, and again, a very beautiful piece of work, very scenographic, quite live art type of piece of work that had a life beyond the course. Just a few more images now to give you flavour of a very different work that comes out of ATP. Uh, this is um, Hippolyte, and Hippolyte um, arrived to us um, fresh from a philosophy undergraduate course in Paris, highly erudite young student, uh, very keen to throw himself uh, at the mercy of theatre and performance making. I make that point because you don't have to have studied theatre and performance before you come onto ATP. Uh, we're very keen on create, building an ensemble of people who come from a wide variety of directions towards us. So we have at least one surgeon or anaesthetist a year, for example, um, or and Diana, who you saw earlier, who was a part of the ants, was actually um, a statistician from Barcelona in Spain. So we get people who really have specialisms in, in some very different disciplines, very different fields, makes for a very rich experience. So Ippolit worked with Rob, here's Rob, who was a professional um, drag queen. And, um, and they worked, the three of them got together to make this piece and call themselves Upla. And uh, so there's Ben at the top, Ippolit in the middle and Rob at the bottom. And this is a very um, theatrical, very cabaret-like piece based on a lot of the clown training and the training they did in the performer practices cluster at the beginning of the course, that actually had a very um, serious and interesting research question behind it, which was what happens to performance when you bring the techniques of clown to bear upon the practice of drag performance? So drag performance is very knowingful, very political, uh, very underground, very activist. But whereas clown training is very, clowns are often very innocent, uh, quite foolish and quite light. So what happens to the knowingfulness of, of drag when you bring the unknowingness of clown to bear upon it? So it's a really interesting performance experiment and a good example of a piece of performances research, which we do a lot of at postgrad level um, uh, at Central. So I think that's the last of my images of that piece of work. So I just want to use those two to give you very different examples of the kinds of practice that comes out of ATP um, and the type of thinking that comes out of ATP as well. So I think that's it. I'm just gonna stop sharing there for a moment just to see if there's any questions. And I'll just check the chat. Oh, somebody's just saying hello. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Oh, uh, Regina or Regina, go for it. Hi, uh, it's Regina. Um, I just had a question about what the difference between the MA and the MFA is. Good point. Thank you. The MA is one year. The MFA is two years. But the MFA second year really takes the last unit or module that the MA does and then stretches that out over a whole year. So the last unit module is really about making a piece of practice and writing about it as well. There is an extended critical essay. Um, but the MA students make a piece of practice and program that in a venue in the outside of Central somewhere for which we give a budget and production management support and lots of guidance through that process. But the MFA students do three terms in the first year and then have a summer break and then come back and do another three terms where the aim is not to produce um, a piece of uh, not to produce a company 
and to make a piece of theatre as such, but to really research performance. Now that might be through practice, that might be through investigating something really in depth, the body of practice, um, but it, the emphasis is on a practice as research in that second year, rather than the production of, of work that the MA focuses on. Um, sorry, I just missed that. Um, there's another question in the chat there. Sorry, I'm going to have to take my glasses off to look at the chat. For it just war a trigger warning there because my face is going to loom towards the, the thing. So this is from Simone. Hi, Simone. Sorry about my face here. I was wondering about the admission process. How does that work exactly? Do we need to audition? Yes, we do have an admissions process. Um, we do have auditions. And you can look at our requirements on our website for what we're looking for. Um, but we do have an audition process. It's very important that we meet potential students and that you meet us and to make sure it's the right course that you're looking for. And also it's important for us to be able to assess the potential for students to work collaboratively, to uh, to demonstrate the ability for original thought and ideas um, and to really for us to build a group of students which is um, diverse and different and interesting and will generate great work as well and we do have more applications than we have places on the course so we do have a process that we have to go through but we are still offering um, digital virtual distance interviews where you can video yourself or document yourself doing certain things, send that to us, we will view it, or I will view it, it's just me doing admissions at the moment, and, uh, and then there will be group Zoom discussions um, after that, so you can, um, so we can find out a bit more about you and who you are. And here we have, um, what kind of flexibility is there on this course in terms of acknowledging work or family commitments? That's a good, good point. Um, the, uh, it is a full-time course, so at the moment current students are in four days a week and that's 9am till 5pm most days. The last two days are half, there's a half day on a Thursday and a half day on a Friday. Um, but from the spring term, the summer term uh, students uh, have much more autonomy over rehearsal schedules and we can be much more responsive to work commitments and family commitments. Um, uh, but things are always negotiable. So it's always good to talk to us in advance uh, about what particular needs that you have and how we might be able to help, uh, not so much tailor a timetable. We can't always tailor things because we have things are fixed and rooms are fixed. So we can't always move the teaching, but we can certainly help you to make your choices because there's lots of choice based stuff um, across the postgraduate courses. We can help you to manage the choices according to your needs, certainly. And, uh, and then Simone's also said you read a 25 minute piece of video. Yes. So this is the distance interview I'm guessing you're talking about. Um, so for the distance interview, we require um, a little statement to camera, a quick hi and who you are, and then 25 minutes of collaboration, uh, loosely based around some of Aesop's fables, which you'll, if you make an application, you'll get uh, an email detailing all of this to you. Um, and um, yeah, we've had some very inventive responses to that. Uh, there's been a number of versions of people doing that in their kitchens. Somebody's uh, cooked a meal while whilst experimenting um, with collaboration with food, which is very interesting. I've had at least three chickens, one raw, the other two cooked through um, auditions, through the 25 minute collaboration. Um, and then at the end, there's a two to three minute uh, performance piece or a talk through a portfolio of practice, but you can get all that information on our pages, um, or indeed, once you apply, you're given more detail about how the distance interview works, but we will also be doing auditions on site, certainly from 22 onwards. Um, that's it for the questions in the chat. Um, I'm just checking the time. If I'm just gonna 
Any other questions? I'm just before I screen share something else, I'm just going to put up um, the website from last students just finished. If I can get this up to back to Zoom to share. Um, that's my share screen. There we go. Just to give you more current up to date work. Uh, Sophie, can you see this that says uh, Format Festival? So this is yeah. uh, the Format Festival is something we launched um, not last year, year before when the lockdown first hit. And there was the question of how, how, where, and in what format do we disseminate practice? So here's a rolling screen of some of the work from this year's uh, MA students. And if I just scroll down, we can see the projects more here. Um, we had Meet Space, which was a collaboration between uh, Gurav, Gurav Singh from India and uh, Laura Lounge, who was um, stuck in Denver, Colorado at the time, and doing a performance literally across the digital sphere, but also in a space at Central at the same time, and having three audiences across, <coughs> pardon me, uh, digital audience, and two different on-site audiences and uh, with a piece about an avatar who moves between the two. Um, another really good example is here, um, is this Cluster Flux, who um, these guys here did a piece called Please Leave a Message, which is um, uh, a piece about warnings. How does one deal with uh, and, and communicate warnings when there's a disaster ahead? So very much, of course, metaphorically about our current times. But what's interesting about this group here, we've got Linda, Linda Van Egmond from the Netherlands down here, Chris and Jack and Murray, I think we're all, we're all from the UK. And here, Trevor, who's from Seattle. They all met because we put them together um, as a company, as a part of the practices unit, which is the experimental laboratory unit I mentioned earlier. And again, they really gelled, they really stayed together and then performed this um, piece of work, which is already getting booked in quite a few places. So we showed it at Canada People's Theatre last September, just gone, who were very keen on it and have taken them on as one of their in-house companies to develop their work. But it was getting interest from elsewhere as well. So it's really great for these students to had um, uh, such uh, quite a lot of producers are interested in them as a company and how they make but they really invested in the process these guys they really did really thought through how what what are the most important questions at this contemporary moment and how on earth do we go about performing a response to those so the idea of trying to leave a message try, trying to communicate something uh took them everywhere through generating um noise art to karaoke, um, to live art, to um, uh, quite scenographic and highly performance-based practice that they engaged in. And um, it's very successful, very interesting, um, very diverse piece of work. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you as an example. So I'm gonna stop sharing there. Um, and maybe just leave a few more minutes to see if there's any Last questions? Well, I've just got a request, Sophie. Is that, I guess that's from you. No? Okay. Uh, what's it, is it a request for access? Live to transcription. Me? Don't worry, <laughs> maybe that was, a, it, I'm guessing that came through from the, it said from the host, so. Um, Oh, here's some more questions, okay. Um, from Beth, hi Beth. Uh, I was wondering if you had any tips on the written application we need to do prior to interview or audition. Um, do you mean the actual app course, the application form? I'm guessing that's what you mean because we don't ask for written work. Uh, yes, that one. Oh, goodness. Um, um, good question, any tips? Um, I think the thing that I is most useful to me when I'm reading them is to read something that's really honestly about you and your practice. Um, often I read 
applications which are really good at telling me things about theatre and performance. Um, but then I think, yeah, but what does this person really think about theatre and the performance? What's this person really about? You know, what have they been involved in or what are they interested in? So honesty and really representing yourself it is really what I'm looking for. So I get a sense of who might be here in the room with us. Um, yeah, don't feel you need to give me an essay. Tell me what you're really interested in. And really, when you're talking about why you want to do ATP, you don't need to tell me what's uh, in the course description, because <laughs> I know all that. Um, but I'm really interested to know, you know why you might be interested in collaborative practices. Uh, what does it mean to you to work with others? And, and why is that now more important than ever, working with others? There's a, we've been denied that for quite a while. So how are we going to go about doing that now? We're slowly getting back into the rooms together. It's a really interesting, quite powerful moment of how collaboration takes place after a pandemic. Um, you know, we're still asking that question. And I think it'd be really interesting to hear, you know, what you think about collaboration at the moment. Um, do we have to prepare anything for the in-person audition? Yes, again, all this information will be uh, available to you once you send an application through. Uh, we ask for a three minute short performance or a three minute presentation of your a portfolio of practice. So that might mean bringing along some images of some work that you've done, say as part of your undergrad degree or as a part of your independent practice that you've been doing doesn't necessarily have to be theatre and performance practice. You might have been, I don't know, making brilliant TikToks for the last two years. <laughs> Bring along the TikTok show as some of those. Those are really performative and really interesting. So they don't have to be of theatre as such. You know, show us something which is about you and your creativity. So there's an option to do either of those, and then we share those and present those with the other people who are auditioning as well. Um, just looking again, sorry. Sometimes it's difficult to read the chat. I think that's it for, for questions. Um, yeah, unless anybody wants to, I'm quite happy for people to speak. Uh, if you want to unmute and ask anything. Cool. Thank you. Sophie, is there anything else that you want to add from your perspective? No, but if anyone has any questions, you can always, um, that come to you afterwards, you can always follow up and email us at openevents at cssd.ac.uk. And we've recorded this, so we'll send the recording to everyone who has attended today. And thank you for coming. Great. Thanks, everyone. Nice to virtually meet you. Hope. Hope we maybe meet you again soon.